Hello and welcome to the Tulfit Alliance Church update for the weekend of April 24th. Thank you to all who joined for our Good Friday and Easter services last weekend. Unfortunately, a power issue prevented us from streaming on Good Friday, so I apologize to all who were trying to get to join online. Initially, it looked like we may be without power over the entire weekend due to the severity of the problem and the difficulty in sourcing parts on a holiday weekend. I'm so grateful that the problem was able to be resolved and we could hold our Easter service and streaming as planned. Big thank you to Jason, to Dennis, to an electrician, and to Fortis for their work in getting power to restored. And I'm thankful to God that we were able to celebrate the resurrection together on Sunday. Last weekend reflects our current environment. Activities and events are back, but we aren't yet completely comfortable with a new rhythm as we feel each new curve that's thrown at us. Programs are resuming, people are traveling, Fewer precautions are mandatory. Infections are less severe, but more people are getting sick. So businesses and families and schools and churches and organizations are all scrambling to try and fill all the gaps that are left. Headlines have now shifted to new worries about the war in the Ukraine and the rising inflation. And we all feel it. But if we've been pinning our hopes on returning to normal, we will be disappointed. It's when we fix our eyes on Jesus that we're able to run with perseverance without losing heart. Hebrews 12 says, Let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. I want to say a little bit about uh, Vacation Bible School this summer. If you are available to help as a volunteer for Vacation Bible School on July 4th through 8th, please let me know this weekend as a decision will be made in this coming week as to whether the program can proceed. This Vacation Bible School would be a combined ministry of Tofield Alliance Church, Tofield Community Church, and Bartle Lutheran Church. However, it will only be possible if there are enough volunteers who have committed in advance. A little bit about our ongoing programs. There is no Sunday school this Sunday on the 24th. There will be Sunday school on May 1st and May 8th. The Esther Bible study for girls grade 9 through 12 is continuing with the next session this Sunday, April 24th, 2 to 4 p.m. at the church. And the Wednesday Bible study on the book of Daniel by De Jeremiah, that's taking place. Danny Drin's hosting that. And the coffee is on, so join if you're available for that. We've been letting you know about the Family Life Parenting Conference. A series of parenting seminars available free on demand, April 20th to 29th, and a webinar on April 30th. You can check out the website. Uh, you can join and sign up and join for whichever ones you want. But there will be a viewing and discussion time at the church on April 26th, Tuesday at 10 a.m. and Friday, April 29th at 7 p.m. So you're welcome to take part in those. And just a heads up about a few things further down the road. In May, May 29th, We'll have uh, guest speakers, Ron and Lois from the Palm Ministry Center. We'll be having a barbecue following the service. And Father's Day on June 19th, we want to be able to have our pie Sunday. So that's what's coming up. I'm starting a series called Without Limit. The Lord's Prayer is found in Matthew 6, 9 to 13, and Luke 11, 2 to 4. We usually recite the version in Matthew, which is slightly longer, including the phrase, but deliver us from evil. In Protestant tradition, we also close with the ending found in some early manuscripts, For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Debate over which ending is better isn't very productive, but it is instructive to notice what follows. The next verses in Matthew relate to how people pray, talks about fasting, and to what people pray about, forgiveness, finances, worry. Luke prompts us to think about the character of the one to whom we're praying, as the verses that follow contain two brief stories that help us understand our Heavenly Father. How do you think our Heavenly Father responds to our prayers? If a sleeping, na sleeping neighbor will get up to give us bread, won't our Heavenly Father do at least as much? If an evil father gives good gifts to his children, won't our Heavenly Father give us much more when we ask? Luke eleven thirteen says, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I'm starting this eight-week series that springs from the implications of that question. What happens when people ask God to give them the Holy Spirit? Jesus operated on the premise that those who ask, receive. 
Yet there are many believers who have asked for the Holy Spirit, but aren't sure what happened. When you prayed, prayed to receive the Holy Spirit, far more happened than you may realize. This series will explore eight descriptions of the Holy Spirit and what happens as the Holy Spirit fills your life. This series is only going to scratch the surface in describing life in the Spirit. We're told in John 3, 34, For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without limit. I hope that this series will help each one of us to venture a little deeper into life in the Spirit, who is given without limit. This week, I introduce the series, and we'll become familiar with the spirit of adoption who prompts us to cry, Abba, Father. You can prepare by reading Luke 11, 1 to 13, and Romans 8, verses 9 through 17. Thank you so much for being part of our church. At Tophet Alliance, we strive to discover Jesus in scripture, in worship, in community, and in missions. Join in person or online Sunday at 10, at 10 a.m., or catch the message later on YouTube. Thanks for joining. God bless.